New cabinets can completely transform any kitchen, but that incredible transformation often comes with a hefty price tag. So unless you've got the time and the budget to do the job twice, you want to get it right the first time. That's why we've brought together some of the top experts on kitchen cabinets to show you how a 2x4 can save your back, a little trick to make your under cabinet microwave install a snap, and why you don't have to worry about little gaps in the corners of your cabinets. This is 10 things you must know about installing kitchen cabinets. <laughs> started installing new kitchen cabinets, you have to get rid of the old ones. Our experts tell you how to overcome this obstacle with a minimal amount of damage in our 10th thing you must know. Don't take off the wall with your old cabinets. Before you move any of the old cabinets, I think one of the first things you should do is shut off the plumbing and make sure that your valves work so you can shut off the plumbing under the sink so that uh, once you remove the cabinet, if you run into difficulties, um, any damage will be minimal. The last thing you want to do is flood the kitchen. Typically, most of the cabinets that you would remove from the old structure are fixed by screws, and in some cases, nails, but usually screws. But screws may not be the only thing holding the cabinets to the wall. There's often a bead of caulk on the edge of the cabinets that could damage the wall. When you're removing your cabinets, you'll try and find all the caulk areas, so you'll score that with a knife, with a utility knife. If you've got some air tile and some grout, try and scrape that grout away to try and loosen up. Take care of your walls as much as possible, but there is a limit. Sometimes it's easier to repair a little damage than do the painstaking preparation that would preserve your walls. Um, sometimes it pays to damage the wall a little bit because you may spend four hours disassembling something that you damage the wall, maybe it would have taken an hour to take part, and then maybe another two hours to repair. You still gain an hour. And don't rush in to taking off your old cabinets. Before you disassemble your old kitchen, um, it's best to probably allow 10 weeks for the order of cabinets. Even stock cabinets usually have an 8 to 10 week lead time. So before you rip your old kitchen out and end up washing your dishes in your uh, bathroom sink, plan everything accordingly, and I usually wait until the cabinets are almost on the job site or the week before they're delivered, before I start to prepare the kitchen room. Kitchen cabinets come in a number of pieces with no instructions telling where you should start. If you start in the wrong place, you could create hours of extra work for yourself. Find out what comes first in our ninth thing. Order yourself an efficient install. Kitchen installers work differently. Some people like to hang the wall cabinets first, and some people like to hang the base cabinets. Uh, there are advantages to each of them. Well, that's always a bit of a you know, back and forth, if you should install the upper cabinets or lower cabinets first, but it's a lot more difficult to install the upper cabinets once you have the lower cabinets installed, because basically they get in your way. You'll have to do a fair amount of adjusting to the upper cabinet, and if your lower cabinets are already installed, you're going to be fighting them through the entire process. It's best for the beginner to get a friend to help and install the upper cabinet first. But should you start installing the cabinets on the end or in the middle? If you have a, a 90 degree or an L or a peninsula, I would always start from the corner cabinet to work my way out from there. If you start at one end of the kitchen, what you'll find is you may box yourself in. The cabinet that sits in the corner, you can work out from both sides on that, and that's where they start. The problem is with a corner, if something's out of plumb and you don't work from the corner, you could wind up with your cabinet not fitting. So it's always good to start in the corner. Once you have your first cabinet up, it normally runs pretty smoothly. Getting off on the right foot is paramount. It'll make the rest of your install go much smoother. Your cabinets will arrive at your home completely assembled, and it may seem counterproductive to take them apart. But our experts tell us why it's necessary in the eighth thing. Strip them down before you put them up. When your cabinets are arrived, quite normally they'll arrive with the drawers, with the doors, you know, installed. 
Prior to cabinet installation, the one thing I like to do is remove all of the drawers and all of the doors from the upper cabinets. But if you attempt to install a kitchen wall cabinets with the doors still on, you do need the doors open because you need to fix in the back of the wall cabinets. And generally, as the cabinets are placed up in the air, when the doors are open, you find the doors flap backwards and forwards and usually uh, end up hitting one of the installers in the head. If you take the doors off the cabinet and take these shelves out, it makes it lighter, a little easier to handle. You can clamp it together and keep it nice and flush. It's always advisable to possibly take off the doors, but mark everything first. You know, put a piece of tape on, on this cabinet, call it cabinet A, call it door A, call it A1 or A2 if it's a pair of doors, uh, drawers as well. Always put your drawer back in the drawer that you took it out from, because it's amazing, you know, you take a drawer out from one cabinet, and you try to put it back into another cabinet of the same size, all of a sudden, you're, maybe your drawer front's sitting out of skew, and you're like, you know, what happened here? But they're, they're set when they come from the factory, or they should be anyhow. So just make sure you mark and identify everything prior to taking it off. And if you missed anything else, log on to DIYNetwork.com for a complete list of the 10 things, as well as more great tips from our experts. Stick around, because when 10 Things returns, we'll show you how a small piece of wood can save you a trip to the chiropractor. However, without the bottom cabinet, you've got nothing to set your top cabinet on. There's an easy solution to this problem, and it's our seventh thing you must know. Use a cleat and save your back. A wall cleat is a piece of wood. It can be a one by three or one by two. It's basically just something to carry the weight of the cabinets as you're installing your rubber cabinets. Usually installing kitchen cabinets is a two-person uh, project but using a piece of wood to support the weight of the cabinets helps you push the cabinet back. Even though it can fall forward, at least it's not slipping and sliding all over the wall. It's somewhat resting, being held in position by you. Um, if you have a friend who's going to help you, then you may not need it. But even if you do have a friend, put the cleat on the wall and then sit your cabinet on the cleat. Pre-drill your holes where you want to, put the cabinet in, and screw it in. Then you can take the cleat off. In addition to helping you hold the cabinet against the wall, the cleat has another benefit. It gives you a very good head start on leveling your cabinet. You should definitely use a cleat. It's your cheap handyman helper. After you get the cabinet on the wall, you can't just put the screws in wherever you feel like putting them. The cabinets are going to be holding a lot of stuff, so it's important you screw them into something solid. Learn the importance of a firm bond in our sixth thing. Nail the studs every time. Finding the studs is very important when you're installing the upper cabinets because the cabinets will end up, you know, most of them anyhow, with a lot of weight inside them, a lot of plates, a lot of cups, a lot of glasses. So it's very important to have a good, strong true fixing. You can ensure a strong fixture by screwing them into the studs. Unfortunately, the studs are hidden behind your walls, so you've got to find them. Stud finders are a useful tool. Um, most of them work on a magnetic principle. So, although you may be finding a metal stud, you could also be finding um, a screw head, a piece of electrical cord, or, in the worst case scenario, a water pipe, and that's the last thing you want to screw into. So I prefer the method of actually physically finding the stud by making the small penetrating hole. You will not see the nail hole and go right across the line and mark them all out. That's the first thing I don't want to do. Using the nail is quite commonly the easiest way to do it especially if it's behind the cabinets. Remember, you're using a small finish nail. No one's ever going to see the nail hole anyhow. And by banging that nail in, you know, boom, you hit, you hit that stud on center. Usually they're every 16 inches on center. So once you find one, chances are you'll find the other one. Take an extra few minutes and mark your studs out. You don't want to be drilling new holes when you're trying to hold the cabinet, and you definitely don't want your cabinet falling off the wall. If you think you can put in new cabinets and then buy your appliances, you're sadly mistaken. Cabinets need to be customized to their surroundings, 
and our experts tell you why in the fifth thing. Plan your cabinets around your kitchen. And before you go ordering your new cabinets, definitely identify if it's an existing kitchen, you know, where your plumbing is for your sink, where your gas is for your stove, where your electrical outlets are for your stove, for your refrigerator, for your microwave, any other, you know, exhaust fan you may have above your stove. All these things become very important to have in place prior to the installation of the new cabinets. And if you're completely renovating your kitchen, the planning stages become even more important. When you're actually installing a kitchen, uh, one of the most important things to do is to choose your appliances along with the kitchen. Most kitchen uh, manufacturers or suppliers will need your uh, appliance information when you place an order. Most kitchen appliances come with what we call a cut sheet, which gives you all of the uh, dimensions for the openings that you need to leave in the cabinetry for the appliances. And most of these cut sheets do show you actually where the electrical outlet should be, where the gas outlet should be. And just take for take a stove for instance, it'll actually show you, you know, like 26 inches off the floor, you know, four and a half inches in from the edge of the cabinet. That's where your gas should be coming out from your wall. You have to have a game plan of where you can start in the direction. Anything you do, whether it's tiling, a cabinet, it's a floor. The most important thing to plan, having a friend come over to help. On the size, you can hang a cabinet by yourself. Are you better off having someone help you? I would say yes. You'll get done quicker. You know, you'll still be sane when you finish. If you try to do it by yourself, you may get, uh, you may get upset with yourself. You may give up sooner than you should. So line up a friend and work out the details before you get started. So it's a game plan. It's a direction where you're going to start. And you're in charge of mapping that out yourself. And if you missed anything, just log on to DIYNetwork.com for a complete list of the 10 things and check out additional tips from our experts. When 10 Things returns, we'll show you a trick to make sure your under-cabinet microwave installs properly. You absolutely can't miss this when 10 Things returns. our experts, you might end up with a microwave that doesn't sit flush with the cabinets. Get it right the first time around with our fourth thing you must know. Get on top of your microwave installation. If you're uh, installing a microwave, a little trick to know is it's always much better to put the receptacle actually in the cabinet above the microwave. So when you're fitting your microwave, you're not trying to plug it in, push it back to the location where it's supposed to be can't actually push it back because the plug itself is going to hold it out from the wall. And that will cause the microwave to protrude from your cabinets. Make sure you have a contractor install the outlet in the cabinet above the microwave. So when you're installing your upper cabinet, make a cut out in the rear of the cabinet in order to make sure the plug or receptacle comes through the rear of the cabinet when you install it. When you're installing the bottom cabinets, you obviously want them plumb and level. But your floor doesn't always want to cooperate. Find out how to keep everything straight in our third thing. Start high and stay level. The first thing I do is put a benchmark. The benchmark is a horizontal line that travels around the perimeter of the kitchen. It could be at any given height, but it's basically a level line which you can measure from and to for your base cabinets and your wall cabinets. So now you can establish where your level actually is and you must begin at your high point. Measure down from your benchmark to determine the high point in the floor. That's the spot you'll begin leveling from. Using the benchmark is a must because even if your floor looks level, it probably isn't. If you attempt to level uh, kitchen cabinets, whether they're wall or base cabinets, from either the ceiling or the floor, you'll run into trouble. Neither of these are usually level and um, it may look okay as you start the installation, but once you get to the finishing, installing tiles in the backsplash, 
you'll notice that all of a sudden one of your tile lines will start to disappear where one of the sets of cabinets are out of level. While you're leveling your cabinets, if you're struggling to get two base cabinets perfectly level and flush, just screw them together. This is an eight foot wall. And let's say each cabinet is four feet long. Screw the cabinets together and then treat it as one piece. So now you're going for both ends. You're not dealing with the middle anymore because the middle's been screwed together already. So put the cabinets together and then put it up against the wall and ship it up. But always start at the high point. And if you don't, you may end up perpetually stubbing your toes. If you start at a low point, by the time you get to the high point, now your cabinets have to be cut from the bottom, which is not something you want to do. You wind up with a small toe pick. If it's out two inches, you could wind up with no room for your toes to fit on there. The toe kick is a little area basically designed for your foot to, when you're against the cabinet to fit on there. That's why they call it a toe kick. If you want your cabinets level, there's only one way to do it. Find out how in our second thing. Nothing equals the forgiveness of shims. Well, shims are something that you should make sure you purchase prior to installing your cabinets. Shims are used again to keep the, uh, the cabinets in one straight line, especially if you have a bow in the wall, so that the fronts of the cabinets are all even. And shims are basically, uh, cedar is a quite common form of a shim. Think of a cedar shake that you might see in a home, but that's basically what a shim is. Shims go from zero thickness to about three-eighths of an inch. But what do you do if you need more than three-eighths of an inch? If you know prior to installing your shims, if you need more than three-eighths of an inch, well then simply grab two shims and slip two shims in together. Shims are inexpensive and absolutely necessary for any cabinet installation. And they're not a bad thing to have lying around the house. If you missed anything, make sure to log on to DIYNetwork.com for a complete list of the 10 things you must know. When 10 Things returns, our experts will show you how to make the little gaps next to your walls and between the cabinets disappear. one thing is on the way but let's take a quick look at the first nine things number 10 don't take off the wall with your old cabinets there's often more than just screws holding the kitchen cabinets to the wall so take your time number nine order yourself an efficient install starting on top and in the corner will save you time and frustration number eight strip them down before you put them up cabinets are much easier to install with the doors off Number seven, use a cleat and save your back. Put a piece of wood on the wall to hold your upper cabinet while you install it. Number six, nail the studs every time. Make sure you find your studs before you begin the installation. Number five, plan your cabinets around your kitchen. Make sure you customize your cabinets to your appliances. Number four, get on top of your microwave installation. Install a microwave outlet above the microwave. Number three, start high and stay level. Start leveling from the highest point in the floor. Number two, level without shims? Not a chance. You have to have shims if you want level cabinets. When you finish leveling and tightening your cabinets, you might have some unsightly spaces. Find out how to cover them with the number one thing you must know. Don't sweat the little gaps. In fact, nearly all cabinets do come with a, a scribe or filler piece uh, where the kitchen cabinets meet the wall. The reason for this is twofold. Most walls are not straight and it allows you to uh, create a neat finish where any contours in the wall are taken up by the scribe piece which you cut. And uh, additionally, it keeps the, uh, the drawers and doors a little away from the wall so all of the moving parts of the kitchen don't touch the wall. A filler is simply a piece of wood that's about three quarter of an inch and around five inches wide. It's used to fill unsightly gaps. Say you put the cabinet up on the wall and let's say from the door to the wall you left three inches of space. You wanted two but you ended up with three. 
Well, the filler, if it's four, you'd want a four or five inch filler because what you would do is you would take a, uh, what we call a compass. We also call it a scriber. In elementary school, we use them as compasses. Things you make the circles with. You take the distance and you follow the wall the way it's going and you draw a line on the pencil, on the, on the piece of wood, and then you can score it and cut it. Normally, we'll either use a block plane, plane it down, or, and or, a belt sander. And we'll test it and put it against the wall to see how close we are. And we'll do it once or twice if needed. If it's farm, we'll screw the next cabinet to it. And now it fits right into the spot and it fills the void between the door and the wall, or the side of the cabinet and the wall. Always get the filler bigger than it actually is needed, so you can cut and follow the way the wall is going. You've got it. The 10 most important things to know about installing kitchen cabinets, straight from the experts. You can now install your kitchen cabinets with confidence. Join us next time for 10 Things You Must Know. Oh, my God.